This tutorial is a product of Iowa Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management and covers the steps necessary to successfully submit a request for public assistance. A request for public assistance, otherwise referred to as an RPA, is necessary to begin the process of seeking FEMA public assistance reimbursement following a presidential emergency or major disaster declaration and the subsequent authorization of FEMA public assistance within designated areas. RPAs are entered by eligible applicants within Iowa Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management's grant management system, EM, grant, EM Grants Pro. You'll see on your screen that we're actually currently at EM Grants Pro's home screen. Eligible applicants for FEMA public assistance include state, tribal, territorial, and local government entities, as well as certain private nonprofit entities. To determine if you are an eligible applicant, please review the applicant eligibility section of the FEMA Public Assistance Program and Policy Guide. You can actually find the FEMA Public Assistance Program and Policy Guide um, just by Googling FEMA Public Assistance Program and Policy Guide. The current version uh, that was in effect as of June 1st of 2020 is version four. This program and policy guide covers all eligibility considerations under the program. Um, under chapter three, you will actually find the pertinent um, section that will review applicant eligibility. If you're a state, territorial, tribal, or local government, you can also review this document to if you have any questions in regards to your eligibility under the program. Um, but a little bit more complex would be the eligibility criteria that private nonprofit organizations must meet in order to be eligible to apply. Um, so please review this section to determine whether or not you're an eligible private nonprofit. Once you have determined that you are eligible to apply for the FEMA Public Assistance Program, please visit my.iowahomelandsecurity.org. It will navigate you to EM Grants Pro. At this location, if you have not previously registered for access at this site, you will first need to register by selecting the gray button to the right of the yellow sign in button. When you select register, it will actually navigate you to the registration form. You will fill out all of the required fields highlighted in red. The email address that you populate this form with will be the email address that your username and password will be sent to once your request for access to the system has been approved. When you get to the section uh, called applicant organization, if you drop down, you will actually be able to um, select your organization from the list of organizations that populate here. If your organization is not represented in this list, please select create new applicant organization. When you select create new applicant organization, the form will further populate with additional fields where you can actually um, build out the account for your organization. After you have fill, filled those uh, fields in, you will be uh, asked to provide a narrative uh, for the reason you are requesting access. At this point, you would say you are requesting access uh, to submit a request for public assistance. And then at this point in time, you're going to give us an idea of what program you're applying for. 
and what the event is that you're applying for assistance. So in this instance, you are applying for public assistance and it is for the 2019 or sorry 2020 uh, COVID-19 event once you register an email will go to the system administrator who will actually review your request and ensure that uh, they're providing you the correct permissions. So it would be helpful if you also, under the positions section, give us an indication as to what your role will be for the organization that you're applying for. Are you, um, are you going to be the authorized agent? Will you be signing on behalf of the applicant or the entity that you're uh, submitting for? Are you the chief financial officer? Are you a county coordinator um, that just wants access to the system in order to have an overview of what's going on within your county? <clears throat> we will utilize this information to better assign the permissions within the system. So when you're done, you register, the system administrator will review your request, validate the information, provide you the, the correct permissions, and you should be receiving an email to that email address that you provided earlier in the form that provides you your username and password. Once you have your username and password, you will navigate back to the homepage of myiowahomelandsecurity.org and you will log in with the username and password that uh, was provided to you. So after we log in, if you're a first time user, it will automatically bring you to the home page. If you have previously accessed the site, it'll take you to wherever you were when you uh, logged off the last time. So to get back to the home page, you will just select the house icon up at the left of your screen and it'll take you to my home. So this is where you're going to want to be to submit your request for public assistance. Off to the right of the page, you'll actually see the applicants that you represent. Um, applicant is, synony is synonymous with um, the jurisdiction that you're representing, the agency, the organization, uh, the subrecipient name. Uh, so if you hear any of these terms throughout this presentation, uh, it's all referring to the agency that you're uh, acting on behalf of. So under the applicants you represent, you'll go ahead and select um, the new request for assistance. And this will actually navigate you to the module that completes the request for public assistance. So this is the new request for assistance module. Uh, this acts as the RPA. You will select the applicable grants. In this instance, it's going to be the 4483 COVID-19 event. And I'm going to again, make sure I fill out all of the required fields in red. I'm gonna make sure that I review this information that was previously provided. If it is correct, I'll select yes. If it is not, I'll select no, and you'll get additional fields that it wants you to answer. <clears throat> so this is the most important section of the form. This is where it asks you for your points of contact. If you hover over uh, the question marks, it'll actually give you hints as to what the field is looking for. 
So your primary contact is the person who will act as the primary point of contact for the grant application or projects. The alternate is going to be the person who is authorized to sign legal documentation and or agreements on behalf of the applicant organization. Uh, this could be um, a mayor, a city manager, um, or your chief financial officer. So it will throw errors if you select the same individual. So in this instance, I'm going to create a new contact and I'm going to designate myself as the alternate for the purposes of. OK. So the county's affected section. So if you represent an agency uh, that has facilities that are located within multiple counties, you'll want to, and those facilities were damaged in multiple counties, you'll want to select all of the counties in which you had facilities that were damaged. You can do that by um, selecting the county, holding down your control key and selecting all other counties that apply. When it asks if a PDA was completed, um, if FEMA and Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management staff were present or had reached out to you and requested preliminary damage assessment information, these are going to be your very early cost estimates uh, that we were requesting in order to determine the impact of the disaster. If you participated in that preliminary damage assessment, you would select yes. If no, select no. You can fill out all of these other fields here. Notice they are not highlighted in red, so they are not required fields um, at this point in the application process. So based off of how you answered on the registration form as to what type of entity you were, if you answered that you were a private nonprofit, <clears throat> which you'll notice up at the top here, the type was designated as private nonprofit, your form will actually populate with a private nonprofit questionnaire. You'll notice these fields are not currently highlighted in red. Um, if you choose to skip entering these fields at this step in the process, you will be required to do so in the next step. So you might as well just answer the questions at this point in time before you submit your request for public assistance, uh, because this information will be required to move forward. So for anything that you select yes, you are going to re be required to attach proof um, or documentation to support your answer. So if I said facility was owned, yes, then it's gonna require that I attach proof of ownership. If I say that I have the legal responsibility for the repairs of the damage, and I select yes, it's going to want to see proof of legal responsibility. If I say the facility was insured, I need to attach a copy of the insurance policy. If it is an educational facility, and then any additional information that you would like us to know. So in order to upload the documents that are required, you would go down to the bottom right of the page where you see no uploaded documents. You'll see a grayed out button here that says add document. You will select that. Oh, I apologize. You must.
you must save it first and then you can go down and add your documents and you will choose the files and attach them so we'll just do And when you are done, you will notice that when I saved it, it actually submitted it to step two. So when I pushed that, when I pushed that blue submit button, it went ahead and advanced the RPA to step two. So you do not need to do anything further at this point. If you actually look at the workflow, you will be able to see all of the different steps. Step two is where uh, the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management staff will verify that um, you have provided a DUNS number. If you have not provided a DUNS number, this the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management staff will reach out to you um, and walk you through the process as to how to obtain a DUNS number if if you need that assistance. After we have verified your DUNS number, it will then go over to the state review of your request for public assistance. At this point in time, we actually provide the RPA to FEMA for their review. So once we have forwarded it to FEMA, you will then see it advanced into step four. It will stay in step four until FEMA has determined the eligibility of your entity as an applicant. If your RPA is approved by FEMA, you will see it, the RPA will then advance in, this, in the EM Grants Pro system to the system admin review. Um, this is just another check just to make sure we have accurate information uh, that had been placed on the form, the RPA form. Once that review is complete, it goes to what we call the monitoring review. So at this point in time, the monitoring review will initiate what we call the risk assessment. Uh, there will be a tutorial for completing the risk assessment. Uh, so be looking for that at the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management website. This tutorial, uh, the risk assessments are required to be completed before, before any funds are provided to applicants. Essentially, the risk assessment reviews whether or not um, actually an applicant's capability to manage federal funding. So once the pre-award risk assessment has been initiated, it will work its way through into the final state review. At this point in time, once uh, the state public assistance officer or the deputy public assistance officer give it the final go ahead, it goes to the, the complete step. And when it goes to complete, it will actually initiate what's called a funding agreement. The funding agreement and the completion of the funding agreement uh, will be covered in another tutorial um, for funding agreement completion. So we will not cover that in detail in this tutorial today.